Um, by the time Kathleen Munn came to the dance in 1923, she had been steeped in theories of modern art for over a decade. Featuring female nudes against a riot of brightly colored geometric forms, the dance is heavily influenced by her readings on synchronism and color music, as documented in her nine student notebooks. Brimming with theories on color, composition, and modern art, these notebooks date from 1912 until 1926 and cover her studies at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts and the majority of her studies at the Art Students League of New York. But beyond the dance's modern style, Munn's choice to represent dance can also be gleaned from an examination of her notebooks, found in meticulously documented reading lists, notes, and sketches. As I'll demonstrate over the course of this paper, her decision to paint dancers stemmed from the growing association between dance and spiritual movement, and Munn's own growing desire to visually represent the underlying rhythm of the natural world. In one of Munn's notebooks, loosely dated from 1918 to the early 1920s, she makes frequent references to dance, writing, quote, tracing Rembrandt, you will see the extreme simplicity of the area of the light. Think of the dancer coming out of the shadow into the light, end quote. And, quote, get the music into your drawing as a dancer would take to rhythmic movement, end quote. Finally, she mentions one dancer by name, quote, Isadora Duncan, the beauty is the rhythm of living form, end quote. Isadora Duncan was one of the main proponents of modern dance. Um, modern dance, the term itself coined in 1927, was a new form of dancing that grew out of the limited choices that existed for dancers at the end of the 19th century. Unlike ballet, folk dance, or show dancing, modern dance did not have a specific set of techniques. Instead, each dancer took their own approach to movement and to choreography. Duncan believed music was essential to dance and received criticism for dancing to classical composers instead of dance music. She believed that great composers, referring to Bach, Beethoven, and Wagner, had distilled the rhythm of the earth and in turn the rhythm of dance in their music. Listening to their music revealed the beauty of nature and could awaken the soul. She called this awakening the first step in dancing and believed that a dancer could attain such an understanding of the body that it becomes, quote, the luminous manifestation of the soul, whose body dances in accordance with the music heard inwardly in an expression of something out of another, a profounder world, end quote. Duncan opposed ballet's restrictive movements, which she argued were sterile and die without leading to any further movement. Instead, she incorporated natural movements into her choreography, such as walking, running, skipping, and jumping. She believed the ideal beauty of movement was documented in Greek vases, as they never depicted what she described as a movement with an expressed stop, such as a leg raised perpendicular to the body. Instead, to Duncan, the bent knees of leaping figures suggested continuous movement. She rejected ballet's point shoes, tutus, corsets, and the salmon-colored stockings, opting to dance in bare feet and the flowing robes inspired by ancient Greece. Duncan became more than a dancer. She became a symbol of the modern woman, of sexual freedom and liberation from traditional gender roles. She became a favorite subject of artists in the United States and abroad. Abraham Wachowicz, a New York-based artist who met Duncan in Paris in the studio of August Rodin, created more than a thousand drawing, uh, drawings of her, some of which you can see here. And uh, Rodin himself believed her to be an embodiment of the ancient world. John Sloan, who was one of Munn's instructors at the Art Students League, noted his reaction to her in his journal, writing, quote, I feel she dances a symbol of human happiness as it should be, free from unnatural trammels, not angelic, materialistic, not superhuman, but the greatest human love of life. Her great big thighs, her small head, her full solid loins, belly clean, all clean. She dances away civilization's tainted brain vapors, holy human and holy, heart of God, end quote. Sloan's allusions to Duncan's spirituality were not uncommon in the general public. It was a well-publicized aspect of her dancing. In a lecture on the future of dance in 1903, Duncan stated, quote, the dance of the future will have to become again a high religious art as it was with the Greeks. For art which is not religious is not art, is mere merchandise, end quote. She emphasized the spiritual primacy of dance by dressing in what she called her little Greek tunic to perform. 
Duncan believed the ancient Greeks were the greatest students of the laws of nature and that their culture evolved from this understanding. She did not seek to copy dances of ancient Greece from Greek vases or friezes, but believed that she might naturally fall into these positions because they were a direct expression of nature, her stated inspiration. Um, the movement of the trees, the waves, and the clouds. Other modern dancers incorporated overt mysticism directly into their dances. Ruth St. Denis first and most famous performance, Radha, cast, her, cast the dancer in the role of a goddess in a Hindu temple and chronicled her journey through physical and spiritual rapture. St. Denis was dedicated to the religious and spiritual aspects of dance, opening the Church of, Church of Divine Dance in Los Angeles in 1934 in order to establish dance as a means of worship. Like Duncan, who visited the Parthenon several times and was enthralled by Greek vases, uh, Saint Denis based many of her drawings, uh, or sorry, many of her movements on Indian art and artifacts she had studied in museums. In developing the dance, Mun too may have been inspired by Indian art. She read widely on the subject and copied figures into her notebook from Some Notes on Indian Artistic Anatomy by Abhinindranath Tagore and The Dance of Shiva, um, a book containing 14 essays on Indian art and culture by Ananda Kumar, Kumaraswamy. Um, she admired what she described as, quote, the continuous movement and perfect fluidity of the dancers in Indian art, as well as, quote, the marvelous representation of movement, end quote. Her drawing of the figure of the dancing figure on the left, it left is likely based on Nataraja imagery, which shows the Hindu god Shiva as the divine cosmic dancer. And you can see how she copied Shiva as Nataraja from the frontispiece of the dance of Shiva into her notebook. On the right is a photograph of Ted Sean, who was another modern dancer and Ruth St. Denis' husband. And I stumbled upon this the other day and just couldn't resist putting it in here. Um, the religiosity of dance, especially those of ancient civilizations, was echoed by various authors. Havelock Ellis, the British psychologist, physician, and intellectual whose work, whose work Munn was familiar with, described dancing as, quote, the supreme symbol of spiritual life, end quote, in a 1914 article in The Atlantic. Similar to Duncan, Ellis argued that dances from ancient Greece, Egypt, and India were more spiritual than those of modern Europe which had drifted away from religious expression. He also states that the significance of dancing is that it is, quote, an intimate concrete appeal of that general rhythm, which marks all the physical and spiritual manifestations of life, end quote. Ellis expanded on this in his book, The Dance of Life, published the same year Munn painted the dance. He describes dancing as the rhythm that marks both life and the universe, and then states, quote, we have but to stand on the seashore and watch the waves beat at our feet to observe that at nearly regular intervals, this seemingly monotonous rhythm is accentuated for several beats so that the waves are really dancing the measure of a tune. It needs surprise us not at all that rhythm ever, tended to be, ever tending to be molded into a tune should mark all the physical and spiritual manifestations of life." End quote. Munn's notes indicate that she did not read The Dance of Life until October 19th, 1925. She was very detailed. Um, but given Munn's use of the word rhythm, she likely subscribed to some sort of conception of rhythm as part of or as an expression of the natural world. In her 1918-1919 notebook, she wrote, quote, everything that grows has rhythm, therefore, you must make the canvas grow also. Give it the rhythm of life. The interest is to give everything the rhythm of life. When we like rocks or a sky, it is almost sure that there is a definite rhythm, such as the human form possesses." End quote. Around the time she painted the dance, Munn was also reading Lawrence Binion's The Flight of the Dragon, a book on art theory and practice in China and Japan. Binion dedicated the second chapter of his book to rhythm, specifically rhythmic vitality or spiritual rhythm, because it was one of the six canons of Chinese art set down by Zhai He in the sixth century. In effect, Binion believed rhythmic vitality meant, quote, the fusion of the rhythm of the spirit with the movement of living things, end quote. He begins his discussion of rhythm by stating that although the term had been limited to music and speech, it is best understood in terms of movement of the body, specifically dance. Not the dances of modern Europe, but the dances of ancient Greece, ancient China, and ancient Japan. He explained, quote, 
When rhythm is found, we feel that we are put into touch with life, not only our own life, but the life of the whole world. It is as if we move to a music which set the stars in motion. The power of rhythm is such that not only sounds and forms and colors, but the meanings associated with them become different, take on new life, or rather yield up their full potentiality of life, fused into radiance and warmth as by an inner fire." End quote. In the dance, Mun was reflecting on all she had learned. The figures move across an elaborate pattern of brightly colored geometric forms before breaking apart and becoming one with the background. The repetition of shapes establishes a visual rhythm. They beat soundlessly across the canvas, evoking the sounds of the music to which the figures are dancing. Not only is the dance a culmination of her studies of rhythm and color, it may also reflect something much deeper, the rhythm of life. Binion believed that in order for artists to access rhythmic vitality, they must, quote, pierce beneath the mere aspect of the world to seize and to be possessed by that great cosmic rhythm of the spirit, which sets the currents of life in motion, end quote. In order to do this, Mun used dance, believed to be the first source of human art and a primal expression of the spirit. The dance showcases Mun's growing belief in the universal rhythm, the underlying order of the natural world. <laughs>